Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to the Brutal Truth Buckeye Podcast featuring Angry Scots, casual fan Chris, and Trey Baby Driver. Boys, how we doing? Living the dream, buddy. What's up? Doing well, man. Happy Monday. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. We're gonna jump right into the uh, the huge game over the weekend, which of course you, you know which game I'm talking about. Not Alabama and Texas. Not Texas A&M losing to App State. I'm, of course, talking when the Arkansas State Red Wolves come to Columbus, Ohio, just go ahead and clear off your calendar at 12 noon and get ready for the biggest game you're going to see at 12 noon. Definitely not the Alabama-Texas game, but Ohio State Buckeyes, the Arkansas State Red Wolves. So we're going to just jump into that game. Chris, can you give us our, your thoughts? Uh, overall, I mean, I think everyone did a, a good job, all things considered. So... <clears throat> I kind of saw this as a real good opportunity for uh, for our guy CJ Stroud just to highlight uh, his his talents and also maybe build a, a stronger connection with uh, with uh, Harrison and uh, uh, Emeka Agbuka. So looks like him and uh, him and Harrison are definitely on the same page. I like how uh, my my guy had a really big day. What three tuds, three touchdowns. Um, <clears throat> 184 yards on seven receptions. So uh, I'd say, yeah, Marvin Jr. got off. Egbuka, he also had a pretty good game too. So really uh, enjoyed seeing those guys build that connection. Uh, defense, I think they they did their thing, held them 12 points. Uh, if I wanted to be a little critical, it'd be nice to, uh, I guess, maybe just go for complete dominance and you know keep it below double digits with them. But uh, overall, good showing. Yeah, also, make sure to like and subscribe uh, to the Brutal Truth uh, Buckeyes podcast. Describers, get those up. Get those hash browns in for your breakfast, Scott. Make sure you get that in there. Right, Anger Scott? I think what, you, I think what you're trying to say there, Trey, is like and subscribe to the podcast. But if you're really just a big fan of breakfast, make sure you like and describe your hash browns. Yes, we can get some hashtags when you like and subscribe. But if breakfast is your thing, man, like and describe your hash browns. Please, please give us your comments. Hit that notifications bell. Exactly. Hey, just just to be nitpicky, I will say this. I was at the gym, you know, getting ready for the four o'clock game. I looked at my phone. Though, I will say just for a minute is I noticed um, seventeen to nine, and I'm like, man, they got to get that offense started up. But then you guys started rolling, forty five twelve. I believe you probably covered. But uh, I want to oh, know. We didn't. Got- hey, two weeks in a row we didn't cover. Oh, you didn't cover. Okay, my bad. All right. Uh, so 45-12, we got it going. I know, I know you probably put the backups in. So I, 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 what's the updates on the wideouts? I know you guys are a little banged up, and I just think you guys are going to be scary when you're fully fully loaded and healthy. So what's where's well, the uh, – I'm going to go ahead and I'll give you my thoughts here. I'll give you the brutal truth on the game. Um, look, man, the D looked better. If, if I'm going to n- get Nick picky, you know, I saw that five foot six inch Darren Sproles lookalike, Champ Flemings. That's the thing about the, the – um for um arkansas state that's the thing about these days and with the transfer portal that i mean we couldn't stop that guy so that is concerning for me i think the defense yes it looked better um the defense is it was one of those bend don't break defenses i like what i've seen from jim Knowles, but you know hey so we gave him three field goals instead of three touchdowns so hey that's that part of it's good but i'm also sitting here watching the game and we couldn't stop champ fleming's he had 10 receptions for 105 yards, for, so if that's concerning to me. Um, I also look at, you know, their quarterback there was a, a kid that came from Florida State, James Blackman. So he went 10 for 34, 188. Look, you saw the talent on the field. Ohio State was a more talented team. Now, they did go and beat Arkansas State to beat Grambling last week. Would you like to guess who the head coach now is at Grambling? Chris, mm-hmm. would you like to guess? Would that be – not sure on that one. Hugh Jackson? Yes, your boy, Hugh Jackson. So when they lost, Gremlin did last week to uh, Arkansas State. I'm not quite sure who he blamed that on. Because <laughs> Hugh, every, every time, with me being a, uh, a longtime suffering Browns fan, he always likes to blame everything uh, on somebody else. So I don't know, man. Regardless, they came in to, to this week. And I, I mean, look, we, we were the more dominant team, but as we were, dom- we were as dominant as what we should have been. At halftime, we were up 24 to 9. So that's great, but I would love to see kind of like what Georgia did. I'd love to see 
us dominate to the game to the to the extent that you can go ahead and not even play CJ Stroud in the second half. You can bring Kyle McCord out, get your backups a lot of reps. I think the wide receivers look great. I think Travion, he looked good. Definitely Marvin Harrison Jr. Seven receptions for 184 yards. I think he was the best receiver. And in that game on Saturday, I think Emeka Egbuka was the best receiver in the Notre Dame game. Both those guys look great. Jackson Smith and Jigma still out until maybe the Wisconsin game. Maybe they'll play them next week. Maybe they don't. Julian Fleming's out. I mean, offense looked great. I, I would love to, if I'm going to nitpick, I'd love to see them score even more points. I mean, in the second half, they scored 20, 21 points in the third quarter, and they only gave up three. So in that regard, it's good. But it's I, I still look at it, it is – if you can't stop a guy like Champ Flemings, and yes, in the transfer portal, he came from Oregon State. So you kind of still get, get some air quotes, big recruits that maybe they just, they left their school that they're at, and they didn't work out. And so they brought in, was it Butch Jones there, who used to be uh, Tennessee's head coach and Cincinnati's head coach. And he was mm-hmm. at the Nick Saban school for the um, unwanted yeah. toys. And sure. so now he's back being a head coach, but you know, there's a reason he's coaching Arkansas state and not a bigger program. So, you know, it is I know my dad, he always says, oh, hey, you're spoiled as an Ohio State fan because you won all these games. You're, I, I am. I am spoiled. But the thing is, you're playing Arkansas State. You're playing a glorified scrimmage, just like Georgia played Sanford. So right. would I rather have them come out and be in 33 to zero? Yes. Now, 45 to 12 is still, you know, a uh, <laughs> ironically a 33 point <laughs> win on that. But I still think it's are you playing to that Buckeye standard. Because when I look at it, is yes, there's a buff. It's enough to beat Arkansas State, but you got to play to that Buckeye standard because it is going to be enough when you play a Georgia team. Is going to be enough when you play a good Bama team. Is it going to be enough when you play a USC team if USC keeps on playing like they have been? So that's why you've got to go and continue to get better every week because otherwise it's going to catch up with you. Completely agree, Scott. So uh, one thing I did pick up during the game. Uh, <clears throat> so Butch Jones apparently he. Uh, had the number two ranked uh, recruiting class. Uh, what are they? FBS for Arkansas State. Or they might be FCS or FCS. Either way, so I'd say uh, tip of the cap there. Big respect for him just bringing in talent. So, mm-hmm. I, I, shame on me for not uh, digging deep into the uh, Arkansas State uh, Wikipedia page and the. Uh, team athletic site to understand all the the roster but apparently these guys are no pushovers and hey again salute to them for uh keeping it close or not close as close as they could keep it um for for the first three quarters but again to go back off of your point i would have loved to have seen us uh, again just completely dominate um and maybe bring it a little bit more one-sided for uh, at least the first half but again building chemistry and getting the uh, getting the, I don't want to say lesser knowns, but uh, making sure everybody's up to speed. I think that was a little more important. Yeah, I, I think it is. You're still dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. And you can say, hey, you come off this huge Notre Dame night game and you can say, oh, hey, we won't look past Arkansas State. But yes, of course, they are going to look past Arkansas State. And I got news for you. We'll talk about it shortly. You're playing Toledo in a night game for some reason. Of <laughs> next week, that's the thing that blows my mind. Alabama, Texas, the big Fox new kickoff. Which, by the way, we would love to have you sponsor Fox. We'd love to have you sponsor the uh, Brutal Truth Blackout Podcast. But until then, what the hell are you doing having this game at twelve noon? I'm talking about Texas, Alabama. The game you should have at twelve noon is Ohio State versus Arkansas State. But at the same time, what the hell are you doing having a night game, Ohio State versus Toledo? You're like, oh, we'll get a lot of ratings for that. I'm like, yeah, but wouldn't you rather have that be like a pretty big game? Why not put that one at 12 noon? So I, I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> Arkansas State actually is a Sun Belt team. So I will say as, as far as that goes. Um, the fun Belt, man. Better watch out. The Fun Belt. Yeah, in fact, so Chris, I don't know where you saw that number two recruiting class because I, I believe they're FBS. So I don't know. Maybe the number two recruiting class in the Sun Belt. Maybe that's what it is. Because it's oh, not I heard it, uh, FBS. I heard the Fox announcement or the, uh, I'm sorry, the Big Ten, uh, BTN, Big Ten Network. That crew. that sounds like fake news to me, Chris. Anyways, uh. but here's, here's, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say is, I mean, things could have been worse for Ohio State. You could have been like Texas A&M and lose to a Sun Belt team in App State. 
You could have been like Notre Dame and lose to a Sun Belt team in Marshall. The thing that's so tough to tell right now, what are we, the number one, three seed in the in, in, in the land? That's fine by me. I, I, I'm okay. I don't think we necessarily play like the number one seed. I think that Georgia's played like the number one seed so far. And I think that, okay, yeah, if we want to say that we're behind Bama, it doesn't really matter. You know, if Ohio State wins all their games and they lose just one game and they lose it, to a good opponent, then we're probably still going to make the playoff. Not necessarily, but if you win all your games, you certainly will be there. Um, but, you know, if, if you would have went and I mean, these, these are more or less glorified scrimmages right now. So if you would have went and lost uh, to a Sunbelt team, that would certainly be a lot worse. It's just what I don't know is how good are these other teams yet? You know, Texas was unranked. They lose, and I think now they're ranked. <laughs> okay. Is Notre Dame, was that a top five matchup? Last week, I kind of think it wasn't. Now Notre mm-hmm. Dame dropped to eight, and then they lose the Marshall. So it's so tough to tell. We'll know by the end of September who's really playing like a top five, top ten team, you know? I completely agree. I did want to touch real quick. I didn't know Butch Jones was the Arkansas State. So my question is, is there a lot of five-star hearts out there? And then also, did you notice any trash cans on the sidelines? Because he used to have – that damn trash can at uh, Tennessee on the sidelines. That was his thing. Trash cans, and we got five star hearts here. <laughs> yes, I, know I, it. I did not see any trash cans out there, but not to That's say I was where, looking either. Hey, if anything, Trey, that trash can is maybe where his fucking career has gone since he left Tennessee. Because I remember at Tennessee, weren't they like champions for life or some bullshit? Not champions on the field, but champions yeah. for life. Champions for life and five star hearts. That's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously that worked out really well for him, didn't it? It did. And he was – I think he was getting coffee for Nick Saban at the rehabilitation coaching clinic for about three years. So, yeah, good for him. Hey, jump it over real quick. What are your thoughts on the game there, uh, Trey? Uh, Yeah, I thought you guys definitely took control. Um, Just – your guys are just sick, loaded. I would give anything just like one of those wide outs. I I know you're uh, – who's your your wide receiver coach again? Oh, don't put me on the spot like this. <laughs> man, he went to school How dare right you? by me, and I'm drawing a blank, man. He played for Ohio State in anyway, the 2000s. You're killing me, man. I, I've got are, his face. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank, man. Brian Harline. That's what it there is. There you go. Yeah, anyway, he he's – geez, uh, you guys are wide receiver. You, I mean, you can go back and forth between you and Bama with just like the wide outs you get are sick. That's where we're lacking. You get really nitpicking. Angry Sean, of course, you know him. He's always like, we cannot get wide outs. We get these – Left over three or four stars. But anyway, your wideouts are sick, and you guys are going to be fully healthy. You're going to be sick. Definitely dangerous. Well, I think real quick, you guys are on a collision course. Go ahead and say it. And you with your hated rival. I think it's going to come down to you and Jimmy Harbaugh with the khakis. Is that at, at Ohio State this year? So you guys, I think you guys are it on a is. collision course. You're going to be maybe top five matchup unless one of you guys – step on a landmine so that's I mean not to look forward I think that's where you guys are headed I know that's a hated game you got revenge but I think it's well and and not to nitpick but here's the thing yes wide receivers right now Brian Hardline has done a phenomenal job with wide receivers but I will say this um we used to get just great linebackers and Mm -hmm. man it's like man we could just get some of these top wide receivers and now we got the top wide receivers and I think a lot of Ohio State fans they look on the field I like what I've seen on Eichenberg you know he might be that top linebacker but um now now we really just want those top linebackers so and to your point there chris i mean the only other thing i'll say if i'm going to nitpick is yes i wish the other uh the backups got in earlier and i really wasn't that impressed with what kyle mccord did it says right here he's three four for 19 yards but i don't know if he's just sleepwalking through because he's not getting all the reps but man i don't know what it's going to be like if he's if he is he really going to be the starter next year now i'm not thinking that far ahead but i really do expect cj stroud to um you know, declare for the draft at the end of the year. So right now we need to enjoy it because I just – I don't know who's going to be the quarterback of the future. Did you watch uh, Stroud at all, Chris? Any thoughts on Stroud? Yeah. The back of QB? I, th- I think he's going to be great as long as he just uh, continues. Well, let me say something real cliche. Just stay on the path he's uh, he's maintaining right now. But, uh, again, as he's building that relationship with his receivers, uh, the receivers are going to put him in a great position. They're going to make his throws look great. But also um, – He's putting the ball in real good places. So, I mean, even if you go back to the Notre Dame game, so some of those uh, those comeback routes, like the the mine Williams sideline comeback. Yeah, but you know, one, you're talking about you're talking about Strat. I'm saying, what do you think of the backup Kyle McCord? 
Oh, my bad. So I thought this was a uh, CJ Stroud love fest, but really big yeah, on Stroud. Stroud. He's amazing. But <clears throat> on McCord, uh, I, I changed the channel by the time he got in, so don't have a ton <laughs> to say. So respectfully, I'm sure. I mean, whenever his time comes, he'll be ready. So I'm not really looking that far ahead. Um, but yeah, I'll respect well, you. Him, are the casual I wasn't fan, looking my for friend, him. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> casual fan chris strikes again <laughs> there you go no hey, one i mean did you how much did you watch of uh mccord i saw enough to know i don't know if he's the guy going for it that that's Would that's you, my concern right do, do i think he's going to be like cardell jones later this year hey man i hope he surprises me that he is but i don't think we got cardell jones sitting on the sidelines right now so that that's that's my concern from what, what i saw of cj stroud now look man and, and, and to be honest with you, years ago, I was like, I don't know about this Joe Burrow guy. If he's going to make it and everything like that. Well, Joe Burrow turned out to be pretty damn good. Doesn't mean CJ Strat, or I'm sorry, doesn't mean that Kyle McCord is going to be Joe Burrow's, but only time will tell. It's just one of those what happens if somebody gets hurt? Do you have that backup? I mean, I mean, Trey, I'm going to ask you. I mean, if Stetson, your boy Stetson, of course, last year, you're like, I hope he gets hurt. So uh, <laughs> the other guy we get in, you know, the, the other guy that transferred to West Virginia, I'm drawing a blank in his name. but uh, JT, JT Daniels. JT Daniels, right. So, but obviously, but now this year, I'm like, well, don't get hurt. Who knows, man? Maybe you're the next Stetson Bennett sitting on the bench right now. You never know, man. But from what I've seen, eh, I'm not overly impressed with our backup. That's all I'll say about Kyle McCord. Okay, before, really. before we look forward here, um, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor. Trey, you want to put them up there? Yes, sir. Viva Seltzer, yeah. VivaSeltzer.com. Hashtag Viva Seltzer on Instagram. Hey, I just I just want to say whether you're having a huckleberry while planning around golf or an elderberry after Saturday morning workout, our their flavors pair perfectly with our artisanal Blanco tequila for our subtle, refreshing drinks. Their belief is live long, live well, and live it up. Hashtag Viva Up. So shout out to our to our sponsor there. Trey, do you know where you can pick up some Viva Seltzer? Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of the uh, major grocery store chains. I uh, believe they're all actually in Costco and some of the other larger ones on like the, the Midwest and on the East Coast and West Coast. We don't have them here in Charlotte yet, but hopefully soon. Um, I'm going to partake in the elderberry beverage this weekend when I go to the uh, Georgia-South Carolina game. Hopefully crack one open around 11 a.m. Because I'm definitely a morning drinker. There you go. Know. There you go. There you go. Well, let me ask you this as we go and we look forward, Chris, before we get into this huge night game that we have on Fox at, at 7. So Fox puts the Ohio State Toledo game on at 7 p.m. But when it comes to um, Texas, Alabama, like big noon kickoff. So what are you going to do? Um, do you think that Ohio State is playing to the standard that if they're playing the Georgias of the world, the Alabamas of the world, another top 10 program that's not Notre Dame or Texas A&M because those aren't top 10 teams? Do you think we're playing to our standard? What would you What would you feel like in next week if they were playing Georgia? How you know? How would we play? Uh, confidence meter. We're not there yet. So uh, Georgia's a gold standard. Uh, they are the standard, right? But uh, no, we're not there yet. We're not playing fast enough on defense. Again, we are getting there on offense, but we're just not clicking. And I'm sure when Jackson Smith and Jigba comes in, uh, returns, uh, maybe. Um, plus a game or so, I'm sure we'll get right back into it. We'll have a full stable of our, our, our threats. And again, um, offensively, we can stand a chance, but right now, no. Uh, I still think we need to get, uh, get the run game uh, more engaged. We're still slinging it a little bit more than the, uh, the run, if I'm looking at our stats again. So CJ threw it for 24, 24 attempts. Combined, uh, Trevion and mine, 18 carries. So, again, uh, if we're going back to the traditional O State, we got to run the rock, run the ball. But, uh, no, we're not ready for Georgia by any stretch. Uh, Michigan, we're still getting there. We still got to prove it. What do you yeah, think? I do think – I do think that Travion Henderson, I think he ran the ball better this last week. Mine Williams, I'll give him the first week. I think Travion this last week. Um, look in Toledo, man. I don't know a lot about Toledo. I know there's some action going on. So, look, <laughs> every action. year Ohio State plays a team from Ohio. So, that must this must be that game. The last time they lost to a team from Ohio, 
I want to say was like 1922, 19, early 1900s. Would you like to guess who they lost to? I know the answer to this. A little, a little, tri- a little trivia question there, boys. Would you like to guess? No, no uh, using the internet. Ohio U. Kent no. State. They lost to Oberlin College. I believe Ooh. it was 1922. You can go and look that up. I don't even know if Oberlin still has a team, for Christ's sake. But <clears throat> when, I, when I look going forward here, is are you going to play to that Buckeye standard? Are you going to go and play so you get better so the C.J. Stout gets better, the running backs look better? Let's get Jackson Smith and Jigma. Let's get him healthy. Let's get Julian Fleming healthy. Uh, Marvin Harrison, Jr., um, uh, Emeka Ibuka. Just keep doing what you're doing. And let's go ahead and let's get some more rest off Kyle McCord, the backup, to see, hey, <clears throat> if, if Stroud does get hurt, can you be the guy? Because, you know, beyond that, man, it's – I'm trying to see what the point spread is with the up this upcoming week versus Toledo. Yeah, right um, here, 31 and 31 a half. 31 and sir. a half. <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, it, it shouldn't be anything of a game. Um, you don't want to take anything for granted. I would love – what would I love to see? I'd love to see him dominate. I'd love to see him do what we expect him to do. I'd love to see him up, you know, by three or four touchdowns in the first half. That's If you're playing to the Buckeye standard, that's what you should do. So don't look past them, but then if you can get up big enough, Kind of like what Georgia did against their, in their game against Sanford that this last week. That if then you don't have to, you can get the backups in the second half. Maybe have like you know one possession in that second half for the starters, and then pull them out because then you know I, I would say we're going to need them for Wisconsin. I think even though Wisconsin just lost to Washington State, so who knows how good they are? But that you know that's going to be another night game. So three of our first four games are all going to be night games Prime for Ohio time, State. Baby. I'm tired. So it's don't look, don't look past Toledo on your way down, to, on your way up to Michigan, even though Michigan's, you know, later this year. Um, and then, you know, Wisconsin and then, you know, Rutgers, uh, you know, West, Rutgers is after Wisconsin. And so we don't really get into the meeting, the schedule until, you know, early October when we got to Michigan State and so forth. So right now, nobody get hurt, play Ohio State football. Let's keep doing what we're doing, play to that Buckeye standard so that uh, we don't look past anyone. And, you know, hopefully we go and we dominate and actually cover a spread for all your degenerate gamblers out there. <laughs> hey, you know, we, you know what we call uh, Wisconsin and down south? We call them whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> you play a whiskey next week. Hey, give us a real quick. Give us a prediction score. Prediction for, for next week. Um, for I'm going to say Buckeyes big. Mm-hmm. Buckeyes 52 to 9. Wow, three field goals, huh? All right. How about you, Chris? I'll give her 55-10, Scott. I like what you're uh, where you're going. Uh, right. This game, though, I'd really love to see the defense get just get off, meaning just uh, going back to the uh, Arkansas State Red Wolves. Uh, looks like two sacks, okay. zero picks. Again, uh, I'd like to see the defense just take off in this game. Let the defense get a little more uh, aggressive. Uh, I'm assuming, and my expectation is that they get a lot more comfortable. Maybe uh, my guy Denzel Burke settles down a little bit more. Didn't seem like he had that great of a game. But, uh, yeah, I I need the defense to shine a little bit more here. I'm going to go just shot in the dark 52-10 because I think it's hard. You got to kick some field goals and people stall. I got you 52-10 and cover that spread. Hey, hey, because remember, good teams win, great teams cover. <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. Hey, do you want to kid a kid a couple other things around College Football real quick? Yes, sir. We can. We can talk a little uh fun belt with the uh the upsets also. Well, your boy before we uh, talk Scott about Frost that, getting getting uh fired if you want to. Let's talk a little, let's talk a little Michigan first. Or should I, I'm sorry, that team up north, and we get into Scott, Scott Frost and some of the other Sun Belt fun belt. They're number, so, I mean, they're number four right here on your heels there, buddy. Jimmy Harbaugh right here, number four in the polls, number five. Yeah, the, we'll uh, see how yeah. good they are. It's uh, Here's – here's you, you played Hawaii, so, you know, they had what – Cade McNamara started week one now, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, Harbaugh says going forward that J.J. McCarthy is going to be their starter, and he earned it on merit. I mean, I think he has the bigger upside. My concern is, is Harbaugh actually figuring out this whole quarterback situation? You know, because he did this years ago when he was at San Francisco. He had Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick, and he put in Kaepernick, and that's when Kaepernick took off. So, um, and I want to say, yeah, took him all the way to the Super Bowl, and then he lost to his brother. Ha, ha, ha. 
But, <laughs> I mean, Michigan definitely looks better. <clears throat> so, that's the other thing. We have to keep on going and playing to – I think it was last year when Ohio State lost to uh, that team up north. It's the first time in 18 years they beat a good Ohio State team. Okay? And so, everyone said, oh, 2011, hey, they lost that game in 2011. They did but they lost that to an interim coach of Luke Fickle, and that was a 6-7 and seven Ohio State team. So the last time they beat a good Ohio State team, Michigan, was 2003, the year after mm-hmm. we won the national title. So that was in Michigan. So I want to say the last time that you know Michigan beat Ohio State was in the year 2000. So like if everybody remembers uh, Conan O'Brien in the year 2000, in the year 2000. Anyways, um, a little bit on Cohen Bryant for everybody who knows what I'm talking about. So it has been a very long time man, since they beat him in Columbus. But, you know, we've got to keep on getting better. I mean, from what I've seen of Michigan so far, they look good. Chris, what, what are your thoughts there on Michigan? Uh, I don't watch the team up north right now. So um, for two reasons, don't care, and also um, still too early. But, again, they beat Hawaii. Hooray for them. Hey, I will, I will say this. Uh, Vandy actually put 62 on Hawaii, and your beloved Michigan put 56, just saying, comparing scores on the island. Vandy, be- go, Vandy. Yeah. Just hitting it, must have, it must have meant more to Vanderbilt. Another SEC powerhouse, Vanderbilt. Who, uh, who, they talked about that on college game day. What's the only team, okay, in the FBS to have never have a preseason, a preseason? No, no, I think it was either that or the only power five team to never have a preseason ranking. And it was your boy Vanderbilt, another SEC powerhouse. Exactly, it is. Hey, look at this schedule real quick. Look, UConn, terrible. Maryland, I, at Iowa, they put what seven points on Sandy, uh, South Dakota State. They're what? They could probably going to be what seven and zero. You got Penn State, Michigan State back to back. So I mean, this is a, hey, and then uh, Nebraska. We can talk about them in a little bit. They're in a good position, you know. Illinois, so they could easily maybe one loss, but this is it right here, boys. Hey, guess what? It's going to be the noon kickoff, Scott, your favorite. Sorry, oh, locked and loaded in there. Yes, indeed. I will say to transition here, Iowa, man, how bad is Iowa? Iowa's offense, offense optional. The first week they scored seven points, but it was a field goal and two safeties. Exactly. And then they lost to Iowa State, I want to say, for the first time in six years. To Nebraska's maybe future head coach, Matt Campbell of Iowa State. So, uh, Iowa, offense, bad. Speaking of bad, Scott Frost. And my whole my whole thoughts on Scott Frost is this, though, you know, is can they bring a, a big-time coach to Nebraska? I think he's actually recruited halfway decent. He loses every close seven-point, uh, one-score game he can. Um, yeah. that's, just who, that's just who, he, who he's been. It's been a complete failure. I remember their AD putting out, like, a tweet and saying, oh, hey, uh, when, when Scott Frost came over, Urban Meyer, Ohio State, Jim Harbaugh, you get nervous. Well, turns out we had nothing to be nervous about. So the problem with a Nebraska fan is, you know, the year it's not 95, it's not 96, it's not even 2001. You lost to Miami in the championship game. It's 20 years. Can you ever build that back to what it was? And who are you going to get to go there? Trey, you brought up some, some possible names. The guy from Kansas coming up. I think Iowa State's head coach, Matt Campbell, actually would be a good fit. That is it, – it is a um, – it, it, it is actually a step up for those guys, but to get it to some other big name coach to go to Nebraska, I think it's going to be incredibly difficult. Uh, you know, my, 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 my other problem with a Nebraska fan, even though a very nice fan base, is, you know, Chris and I were at Ohio State Nebraska game years ago and we had some of their fans buy us some beer. The problem is you rather, if you're that nice to buy us some beer <laughs> and when you're in Columbus, that's great. But right now, you rather have a nice coach than a coach that gives you results. Bo Pelini, not nice. And he was nine and three. And you're like, ah, I don't think uh, Bo Pelini is, you know, that's probably the best he's ever going to do. How many Nebraska fans out there, what would you do? How many fingers would you give up for a nine and three season right now? Because nine and three <laughs> is a long way away. Okay. How also, Frank Solich years ago, you know, ironically, I remember Trev Alberts was on. Um, college football final at the time and he's like no i think they made the right move firing frank solich after a 10 win season well frank solich went on to ohio university actually did very good down there at ohio university i think they retired him as the winningest head coach i want to say he did a great job with ou ohio university being the football head coach but you fire somebody after a 10 win season because it's air quotes not good enough well here's the other side of it you got one of your guys they always wanted a nice coach mike riley was the coach came over from oregon state 
Him, not good. Bill Callahan, complete failure. And now Scott Frost, man, I didn't know it was going to be this bad. I thought it was going to maybe take a while to get his guys in. Man, it's just if there's a close game, you're going to lose it. That's what's going to happen. You lose to a bad Northwestern team who just lost to Duke, okay, in the first game of the year. You lose to you, – you beat North Dakota, but it's not even the good North Dakota State <laughs> with the Carson Wentz's, the Trey Lances of the world. It's bad North Dakota that you lost to. And then you go and you lose to Georgia Southern Trey. Isn't that where you went to school? That's correct. The fun so, belt, baby. That being D-A-T-A. Said, that being said – I mean, you have no business whatsoever. Now, ironically, you lose to Clay Helton, who was uh, the head coach there. He's the head coach there now. He got fired around this same time last year at USC. <laughs> so, but w- what does that say that, I mean, why wouldn't you just go ahead and wait a couple weeks and that buyout goes from $15 million to 7.5 on October 1st? My right. guess is they're either right. saying, hey, here you go, Scott, um, Thanks for that uh, split national title in 97. Hey, we respect you. We'll give you uh, seven and a half more million dollars. Hey, you want to give me, you want to give this angry Scott seven and a half million dollars to go away? I will happily do so. Okay. That or just, I'm guessing that some of the boosters came in and say, look, this is unacceptable. I mean, what also, what's, what could go, if, what if they actually beat Oklahoma, which I don't see happening, but if they beat Oklahoma this upcoming week, or he won some other games where they have to hold on until longer, just delaying the inevitable. So he's just – that was a complete failure. I'm shocked at how bad it was. What are your thoughts on it, Chris, with Scott Frost? Oh, they pay, they couldn't uh, get him out of there quick enough. The king of bad decisions, right? So if you go back to that first game, what, he lost on a, a horrible, horrible special teams decision or a series of horrible special teams decisions? This is after he hired a new uh, special teams coordinator too, right? That's right. So long story short, the guy makes terrible decisions. You give him the right resources, he still makes bad decisions. So uh, I guess the fine people of Nebraska don't uh, deserve that on their way back to the glory days. So cue the song and glory cue days. the royalties. There you go. <laughs> but, I mean, look, that says how badly they wanted him out of there. They said, keep the money. We'll even – we'll throw in a non-compete clause. Wait a minute, you didn't. So – Long story short, good riddance, Scott. Frost. I mean, that, doesn't that show you what a, a complete failure it is? Why wouldn't you just fire him in the offseason? That's what you should have done. If it's not even mid-September, for Christ's sake, they played in week zero, week one, and week two, you're gone. Oh. <laughs> I mean, right there, that tells you that it's a complete failure on their, the, on their part. Well, this yeah. is NCAA football too, Scott. So, I mean, paying head coaches uh, exorbitant. Uh, sums of money uh, prior to big results, it's it's not uncommon, right? I mean, shout really, out to Mel Tucker at Michigan State, right? After a, a nice, successful season, they uh, they back up the Brinks truck for him. We'll see what happens. Still seeing what happens with him. He's still he's nowhere near as bad as a uh, old Frosty, but I mean, this is NCAA. If you think you've got a good coach, you latch on to him, you overpay him, and then you pay the consequences later. Yeah. It's just it's just a shame, Chris, that this day anybody will do anything for money. Speaking of which, have you tried a Viva Seltzer? Because they are delicious. I and love we would them. love to have some more sponsors here on the Brutal Shoot Buckeye podcast. Buy some right. Viva now. Awesome. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to throw real, real quick on this. I want to throw some uh, numbers. Um, so Scott Frost, 16 and 31 in four seasons. So terrible. Also in close games, I think you touched on that earlier, uh, Scott. In, in close games within one possession, seven points or less, five and 22. It goes down to coaching and scheming and everything. So I just couldn't couldn't close out. Also, coaching hires right here. I've been hearing his name. Not not a uh, not a fancy, flashy hire. This Kansas dude, if you can win at Kansas, and we're not talking basketball, uh, what is this, 150, 49? Anyway, they have the as of two games, they, they're the number one total offense in the nation. I don't care if you're doing that. I think it's 111 points. If you're doing that against school of the blind, sisters of the poor, volleyball, <laughs> AAU, whatever. That's, that's impressive. You might be a name uh, for that. But uh, good, good written, Scott Frost. My next question is for you guys Does he end up at Nick Saban's rehabilitation center in Tuscaloosa next year, handing out coffee? Just for a break. But everybody doesn't end up there because remember Tom Herman, who was the coach at Texas. Right. <laughs> Where's Tom these days? <laughs> he's I think not. He was he's not at working Bears for like an analyst. 
fun. He's like an analyst a year or two ago for the Bears, like one of those analyst roles. He might be an analyst, and I think he might have picked up a um, uh, an announcing job or something like that, like your boy Dan Mullen out of Florida. He's is now uh, got an announcing job. So he'll eventually get back into coaching. But that's the other thing, man. If they're going to pay this money to go away, I'll just happily go away for a little bit. Like, get out of football for a little bit. But what's crazy, they'll be like, well, maybe I can be a special team's uh, – uh, uh <laughs> assistant coach or something like that i was like do you need to do that i mean he was he was assistant coach um you know or um for oregon you know scott frost was when he was making his way up and i want to say then his i want to say his first head coaching job was ucf i'm not positive about that mm-hmm. but um that's where he had his success but even then he had the one really successful year and then obviously it's been a complete failure at uh nebraska so um we want to get into real quick to a couple of the other Sun Belt Fun Belts. So, real quick, did you watch any of the um, Alabama Texas game before we get into the other Sun Belt Fun Belt games? Yes, uh, I yeah. did. Go ahead, Trey. Your thoughts yeah. on that, Chris? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, again, respect to Texas for hanging in there. Uh, really good to see what some uh, old old mullet Quinn Ewers. He uh, he did his thing from the for the few series he was in there, but uh, also a way to step up. What's his name? Hudson card. I wish, uh, I wish they would have gutted it out. It would have been awesome just to see a little bit more upset, but apparently the, uh, the universe had it to where the entire nation was going to mess with Texas this weekend. So uh, anyway, it was good to see Bama sweat. Good to see Texas, uh, you know, just show, showing they're ready to compete. Uh, They showed face and they just, they made it a hell of a game. So all respect. Yeah, that, that game was obviously – they said on the field there was like a two-mile-per-hour wind, which really means no wind. And they say on the field it was like 120 degrees, so I don't know what it was like playing on the surface of the sun. So mm. we can thank the big Fox noon kickoff because Fox, they rather go and put the big games on at 12 noon and play, you know, the Ohio State Toledos in pride time. So yeah. what are you going to do? I mean, it was – honestly, it was the best, best game of the day. Um, Texas, man, their D looks real. I mean, and also, is that a chink in the armor for Alabama? Is Alabama, was that just they had to survive this and then they're going to come back? Because really, they outplayed them. And now I think we could see why Quinn Ewers, even though he looked like a caveman with the mullet and everything, if he, man, he made some, he made some great th- uh, throws early in the game. And I think you could see why he actually won that quarterback competition versus Hudson Card. That was the, um, he was the starting quarterback last year. So, you know, if Quinn plays that whole game, I think he's out for three or four weeks or something with a, a clavicle sprain. Um, yeah, I think it could be a different story. So I kind of wish he was our backup. He was going to be our starter next year, uh, I mean, in Ohio State. But, you know, if he can go and he can play now for Texas, I mean, I can't blame him. That's This is the world of the transfer portal. So, yeah, I mean, Alabama, is, are they as good as what they thought they were? You know, at least they came out with a win. As compared to Texas A&M, I thoroughly enjoyed watching um your boy Jimbo Fisher mm-hmm. you know the auctioneer himself excuses 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 uh Trey you might have a couple of those stats in terms of how many four and five stars um uh Texas A&M has as compared to App State I love to see App State come in and beat them reminded me of the days when App State beat when they were an FCS school because now they're an FBS school but when they were an FCS school they went in and beat Lloyd Carr in Michigan 34 32. I want to say the year was 2007. That was Lloyd Carr's last year. So, your, friend, your friends from the north, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> so now, hey, Michigan, you got some company with Texas AM. So, Jimbo Fisher, you got some games coming up. You got me coming up next week. And then Arkansas, Alabama, October yep. 8th. And I'm sure, you know, it, it, hey, man, now, now that you got that big out of conference game out, out of the way, you know, Appalachian State, you can come out of an L. Now you got a lot of other SEC. I see another four or five lost season coming up, Jimbo. And, you know, yes. good thing you got that 10-year contract because yeah. right now eh, I think that's it's going to get warm if you sleep on keep on going this route. No, you don't want to hear this if you're Texas a and fans. You're staring at, 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 like, Texas Bowl, Alamo Bowl on, like, December 30th. That's what you're looking at. The Alamo Liberty Bowl, Bowl man. Yeah. They got a Liberty Bowl written all over it. Yeah, Liberty Bowl in Nashville is terrible. Bowl Georgia's in there 2017. It's 12 o'clock on like a Thursday or something. Terrible. I watched it. Just yeah, December 28th, no less. Yeah. So here's the other thing, yeah. Jimbo, and you're, for, for, for everybody else in the SEC that says, "Hey, this these uh, these expanded playoffs can't come fast enough." 
If you're losing to App State, you're not going to make the fucking playoffs. I got news for you. So I don't want to fucking hear it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, th- I'll throw some of these numbers at you again, which is crazy. All right. David versus Goliath. This is from uh, 247. Uh, Josh Pate, by the way. Great podcast. Late kick out there. There's a shout out. So this is from 2018 to 2022. All right, Scott might have already given away on us. How many four stars and five stars on an 85 man roster do you think that Texas A&M has? And then we'll go back to App State. Just okay, I'm just going to guess. Yeah. Is it 56? <laughs> it is 56. That's great. Think about well, what it. 56, I guess four and five stars. <laughs> what do you? App State had one. Hey, uh, football spending budget in 2021, NIL and everything towards recruiting. How much do you think that Texas a and spent tw- uh, against uh, App State? Do you want to take a guess, Chris? Yeah, go ahead. 20 million. Oh, nice. All right. What do you say there, Scott? Um, 37 million. That if that is uh, you talk about, you, are you talking about uh, A&M's spending budget, right? That's right. 36.8. You're really close. Oh, wow. Man, I'm pretty close. Look at that. Hey, fo- hey, and then the football spending for App State, what do you think they spent on, like, recruiting or, you know, whatever for football? I'm going to say $10 million. 9.7. Really close. And then finally, Jimbo Fisher, $9 million salary. And then what is Sean Clark's, even though who would know his name unless you're an App State fan? What do you think his salary was? You want to guess there, Chris? I'll say a million bucks. I'm going to say 420,000. 425,000, exactly. Booyah. Think about that. Think about talent. Put that, hey, 420, money. put that in your pipe and smoke it, Jimbo. <laughs> exactly. 425, and he's making like how many years would he have to work to get one year of your sound? So all I'm saying is eight and four, smoking hot seat next year for Jimbo Fisher. Seventh, you had almost the same exact identical record as Kevin Sumlin when he was there. The only thing Kevin Sumlin has. I think Chris said it last time is Johnny Manziel. The only thing I can give it to you is you did beat Saban the first year, the first assistant coach to beat Saban. Other than that, you got problems there, buddy. Yeah, well, Kevin Sublin now, he I think he was in Arizona for a while. I don't think he's even coaching anymore. If he is, it's even a, a lower school. But that just shows you, man, that that, that seat's going to get hot. I mean, at Texas A&M, they got a lot of boosters, and they have a lot of expectations now, but – We'll see, man, because you still haven't done it. I want to say their last fake national championship was like 1936 or something, Texas A&M. You can look it up. And that was when, like, the newspaper said, yeah, sure, we'll give it to you. That's how Michigan a lot got a lot of their national titles. But, yeah, I don't know. Here here you go. Newspaper. We played eight I think games. Another, I, think another bad, I think another bad stat, I believe I could be wrong, the last 22 or 23 seasons, they've only won – there's been one time they won more than 10 games. So you can basically just say they're a dormant program, right? No, absolutely. Well, any other thoughts on, like, Chris, did you watch any of the Marshall-Notre Dame game? I did not watch a single second of it, but uh, <clears throat> go Thunder. I didn't watch. How did that game look? Hey, another thing to be nitpicky with you guys. All right. Yeah, just to be just to be a little – just being honest. All right, so was that a less uh, win that, all right, they get hung around with you guys and they were a top-five team and then they go and they kind of, you know, shit the bed against Marshall and lose 36-31? How does that look? Yeah, that might be I, I, I'll a hangover say, win. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I think they might have went and lost. I think Ohio State beat them two weeks in a row. <laughs> I okay, think I uh, Ohio State You're beat them like- that first week, and then they looked past Marshall. And like I said, man, I like Marcus Freeman, but yeah. you know, Notre, Notre Dame. If you go back to the days of Charlie Weiss, he would have already gotten his ten-year guaranteed contract. But dude, starting out zero and three, I get it that the first one's in a bowl game versus Oklahoma State. And then your next one's versus Ohio State, but you can't lose to Marshall at home, man. And you got North Carolina coming up. Maybe they're not world beaters, but you got USC, you got a Clemson on the schedule. So it's not going to get any easier. And your quarterback is out now, I want to say, like out four to six months, which means that he's out for the season, you know? So hopefully you got somebody because things are going to get tough, man, fast. So it's a tough way. I like Marcus Ruman a lot, former Buckeye, but. Yeah. It's a tough way to uh, to start his coaching career. So the only other say, thing I'll say here, and we'll kind of wrap it up unless you guys have anything else to add, but, you know, Ohio State playing Arkansas State, now Toledo this next week, you know, Georgia playing Sanford. So you saw some of these. Uh, <laughs> Texas A&M thought they had an easy matchup against App State. So, I mean, hopefully when they get the expanded playoffs, you know, I think at some point in time they're going to be playing players. But also – you know, these other games, are you going to have less games or these other glorified scrimmages? Are you going to get rid of these? Are you just going to have one of these? Or maybe you just do it preseason. It doesn't count, you know? So I think 
it, it's tough to get excited, you know, for Ohio State playing Arkansas State and Toledo, or even for that matter, Rutgers. You know, hey, you could lose any of these. Anything can happen on any given Saturday. But when the expanded playoffs come, you know, I, I hope we get rid of some of these other games because that is one of those. I mean, you can make the argument that the second big sport in the United States is college football only, you know, only to the NFL. And in some markets, it's bigger than the NFL. Mm-hmm. Across the board, NFL is bigger. But I think at some point in time, these big TV contracts, you're going to start playing players. And if you're going to have more games, then you got to start playing them. You know, I mean, just, Chris, can you get excited for these early? You know, you can get excited for Ohio State and Notre Dame, but can you get excited for some of these other matchups? No, it's tough to get excited for these early season matchups, but they are vital. All right. right. So, again, you have you, – you see the double-edged sword of jumping just right into these, uh, these very talented teams, right? Ohio State versus Notre Dame had me on the edge of my seat all game up until we started breaking away, you know, late third quarter. So, again, I think you need these games. Uh, it, it's still kind of a – I'll call it goodwill missions. Again, since the bigger schools do contribute and, uh, and pay, definitely pay the smaller schools just for the, the competition, but it's, it's needed. And I think when you'll you say- see uh, – And but when you get into the – deeper into the season, you're going to see, I think, less of the unnecessary – I'll call them unnecessary uh, conference games. So Ohio State Rutgers, when the expanded college football playoffs come around, I think you're going to get rid of those, I'll call them cupcakes, right? You're going to see less of Ohio State versus Illinois. And we're going to look more forward to, again, higher competition, scheduling a little stronger uh, opponents towards the end. You backload it. When you say they're vital, so those are both two Big Ten teams. So I still think, you're not going to necessarily, unless they go ahead and get rid of conferences, which, you know, by the time it's all set up, maybe the Big Ten has 20 teams, even more. Um, so they have those, you know, where the ACC is going to go to is you play these three teams, you know, you play two or three teams every year. So Ohio State always plays Michigan and Penn State. And you go to these different pods or something where it's like you, then you pay the other, you play eight one year, eight the next year, because, yeah, I can't get excited for the Illinois. Sorry, you're not very good. I, I can't get excited for the Rutgers. But even these early games, you know, besides, oh, hey, you get the tickets that come in. But even the fans, man, hey, you get the students into these games or if you, you've just never been to a game at Ohio Stadium, they want to go and see us. But who are they vital to? I don't know as though they're really vital to Ohio State besides the fact that you want to go glorified scrimmage and you want to get better as can pay and you can, you know, more or less get yourself a guaranteed victory. But who are they vital to? Are they vital to these other smaller programs? Is that what you're saying? It's vital to the programs and also vital to the team, right? It's it's for building chemistry. It's for getting uh, schemes installed. It's for making sure the teams just understand the assignments. So if if you were to drop Ohio State versus Georgia, you know, first week of the season, somebody gets murdered, either because somebody's cold, right? So somebody's just on their heels. They haven't really gotten into the defensive scheme uh, fully. Uh, and I just kind of trailed off. But long story short, you just it's it's a bad idea to go early and uh, go hard that early, especially when you've got uh, young, young talent coming in, trying to make immediate splash uh, impacts. It's better off to either wait until until you get a few seat or a few games into the season. You get some hits, you get some contact and you get some live game action. Yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, it is. Yeah, if you had a if you had a killer every every week, then that would be that would that would be a a, a a tough road ahead. But it is one of those. Besides going and getting some chemistry, going to your players, I don't know as though they're vital because it's not a charity. <laughs> you know, if you they, they're one of those other things that somebody throw out, you can have these games in the spring. You can do mm-hmm. these games as true preseason games, and then you go and you do that. But I mean, hey, also look at Texas and that man. They paid App State one and a half million dollars to lose. So anything's possible. I get that. But besides getting some chemistry, yes, if you're playing the Georges of the week, uh, of G- Georges of the world every week, that would be difficult. But and, any other right. thoughts there, Trey? And we're going to wrap it up here. Yeah, actually, really quick, because you guys said that. I remember they say they schedule this. We will be old men when this happened. But it looks like there's 2030 and 2021 Georgia and Ohio State plays. Hopefully we're still around for the uh, Brutal Truth podcast. We'll be some old men by then. Hey, maybe we can go, Scott, you want to sit with me at the game, buddy? Uh, I mean, that's what, nine years, nine, ten years will be. Yeah, you're going to be, be like, old. obviously, you're going to be like, you know, um, with the um, in, in a wheelchair at that point in time, I imagine. I mean, obviously, nine years is really going to age you. I love it how we're going to be like <laughs> dead a decade from now. 
<laughs> we'll see. Hey, Scott, if you get me tickets to the shoe and we can get Sean and Chris, it will be a great experience. Just saying, maybe we'll all have enough money by then. But hey, get us tickets for that game, man. Work on it. Got another 10 Let's years. Do it. Hey, you can Dude, go to that's... Athens. It's close by. Hey, four hours. Let's go. Get a little uh, Sanford Stadium welcome. Only if I have a refreshing beverage to drink before the game. Not exactly. a morning drinker, but a late morning drinker. Maybe like a Viva Seltzer. So. Viva Seltzer, exactly. There you go. Well, gentlemen, that is sure. another episode here of the Buckeye uh, of the Brutal Chip Buckeye podcast. Please like and subscribe uh, to the podcast. And once again, another shout out to uh, our sponsor, Viva Seltzer. Uh, casual fan, Chris, thanks for joining us. Trey, baby driver, I'm Angry Scott. We'll see you next week. See you next week. And we're out.